soul and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned crown thee with love and kindness and tender mercy, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth should be moved like the eagle. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always shield, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us as our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquity. For as the heavens is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgression from us. Like as the Father pitted his children, so the Lord pitted them that fear him. For he knows our frame. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are thus. You know that the uh, word of the Lord has always been black and it's of righteousness. Amen. God is is of righteousness. And we just thank the Lord for doing that work. Get back home, we find out. Uh, 
Father God. So we can lay our head on your breast. And we'll breathe our life, our freedom now. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. For his name is sake.
drive me that much farther down on my knee. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. Our Father, our God, we come right now, Lord, to tell you thank you. We thank you for this offering. We thank you for our worship and giving, Lord. We thank you for those that had to give. Lord, we thank you for those that had it not but had the desire to. We pray that you bless those, those 10, 20, and 100 fold. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen. 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 This time we have the announcement. We have our announcements. Good morning, children. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So glad to see each and every one of you here today at the house of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. I can't before you to make an announcement about the transitioning of Reverend Dr. Ferris. D. Evans, Pastor Emeritus of the Clark Road Missionary Baptist Church. His funeral, they will have a celebration of life tribute. The public viewing will be on Friday, January 21st, 2022, from noon until 7, and the family hour is from 7 o'clock until. The funeral will be on Saturday, January 22nd, 2022, and it's a celebration of a triumph and of victory. The public viewing will start at 10, but the service will begin at 11. All services will be held at the Clark Road Missionary Baptist Church and the address of 2841 Clark Road, Gary, Indiana. Let us remember to keep the Clark Road Missionary Baptist Church and the Evans family in our prayers. Thank you. God, it could be us. And we just want to make sure that we lift the Clark Road family and the Evans family up in our prayer. Prayer is always in order. How many know you need the Lord? You need to hear what the songwriter say every second, every minute, every hour of every day, every week, Every month and every year, come what may. And how many know it's a lot of stuff that comes your way? How many troubles? We can't even name all the trouble that comes our way. Seems like when you get over one thing, there's something else waiting on you on the other side. But how many know if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side? Where? Where would we? Be. If you know you need, we challenge you to come on down to the altar. Mask up. I know we're social distancing. The mask up and come down to the altar. I need the
So God, we ask that whatever these that people stand in need of, that you would grant it unto them, 10, 20, and a hundredfold. In the mighty name of Jesus, some are sick among us. Some have been diagnosed with the COVID-19. But, oh God, we know that you are able to not only make sickness leave us alone, but you can make our enemies become our footstool. And right now, Lord, we call on you to do what you said you would do. We ask you, Lord, to hear and answer our prayer. Right now, Lord, somebody is lying and on their bed of affliction. And oh, my Father, I know you're able to hold them in the hollow of your hand. Lord, somebody is on my sick list right now. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Truly a blessing. 
blessing to be here in the house of the Lord once again here at the Great Pilgrim Church. I count a blessing from God to always have an opportunity to come here to visit my family. We all family. Amen. Amen. You know, um, yesterday I just want to thank God for giving us an opportunity to attend my uncle's, even my dad's brother's um, funeral. We had such a wonderful time. God really speak yesterday, his word, you know, through me to encourage the family. You know, a lot of times when we are faced with death, we, we get angry, we get bitter, we get tired, we get upset. We have a lot of frustration begin to build in our lives. But I thank God that it was a beautiful celebration for my uncle when yesterday. So giving honor to God and to the shepherd who's standing in position as the great shepherd of this church, my dad. I thank God for both of my dad. I love to hear him sing every single time. He bless my soul. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's a ringing in this microphone. I just thank God because, you know, he's come a long way. And when you follow his life throughout the generation, you see where God brought him from. Amen. And that's the reason to praise God. There ought to be a praise in your heart every time you come into the house of God when he walked through those doors. So he could have been dead a long time ago, but because of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. God graced him another opportunity to be here as the shepherd. And I thank God for that. Thank God for the musicians. You know, I was talking about a message as I began is um, the Lord of the Shepherd. But I want to sing the verse of uh, a song. Give me a moment. Myself. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's not a friend like the Lord, Jesus. No.
He said, I came to give you life and that more abundantly. Then you go down to verse 13. He said, the hireling, matter of fact, go to 12. He said, but he that is an hireling and not what? The shepherd. Whose own the sheep are not. See, the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catches them and what? Scatters them. Scatters the sheep. So the hireling fleeth because he is what? A hireling. And he cares not for the sheep. But then he goes and declares again that I am, hallelujah, glory to God in the highest. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known of mine. You may be seated. Glory to God in the highest. God is in the house today. Because I was pondering this when I heard the news about what was going on in the house at Pilgrim Church. God began to speak to me. He says, you know what? I place people in position to shepherd my people, which are my sheep. So my sheep, the one thing I talked about yesterday, how sheep, they're, they're, they're innocent, they're dumb, they don't know how to take care of themselves. So they wander off from the sheepfold in different pathways that are not of God because of their flesh and desires. When your flesh arouses, as a sheep in the house of God, you find yourself wandering. But Psalm 23 said, He leaves me beside the still one. He throws my soul. He leaves me in the passion screen, right? Why? Because the shepherd knows what you need when you need it. See, a lot of people don't know how to rest. So you get frustrated because you can't fix your own situation. So you get busy. Busy in all the affairs. Busy in your affairs. Busy in stuff that got nothing to do with you. <laughs> so you wander from the sheepfold when he says, Now rod and I fell. Now I love this part here. Because the shepherds, back in the time of the Old Testament, they would give the young boys with the responsibility to care for the sheep because they couldn't take care of everything that they needed to do to fulfill the, the mission of guarding all the stuff, right? So, when God came to Revelation, he says, the shepherd boy, they would give him a rod, and they give him a staff. He said, the rod is for the correction, not only correction, but to beat up the wolves that were coming against the sheep. And then while the beast would try to attack the sheep, he said, but the staff was, a, was there as an anchor that when the sheep fall into a pit of despair, I can take my staff, reach out, pull them out the pit, kill them on my shoulder, take them back to the pasture, and So I thought about this church. God says, not only do you have shepherds that are hiring, you know what a hiring is? A hiring is an individual who is hired to do a certain work only for monetary gain. But once the resource is not there that they need, I'm a bad ship. I ain't got time. I'm leaving the sheep for God be part of it. God said, in my sheep, they know my boys, a stranger. <laughs> They're not going to follow, because I know the shepherd, the good shepherd. He provides for me. He takes care of me. Even if my money ain't coming in, it ain't coming. The good shepherd says, you know what? I'm going to hold the job. Ah! I am God El Shaddai. I'm a God who has enough to be joined. I didn't have much money to come here to go to Indianapolis. So I talked to my fiance. I thank God for her. My, my, my right God. Thank God he put us together. Because this woman has been a great encouragement to my ministry. Who keeps me fired up for Jesus. Because I taught her when I first met her, her potential, her purpose, what God called her to be in ministry. And today she's standing as a living witness. So when, when I, I pray about this, I said, God, I don't have a lot of money, but I got to go to Indianapolis. And my pastor gave me $100 and I 
last, last Sunday. I said, God, I'm going to take this $100. I'm going to pray this $100. I'm going to leave in faith or stretch this $100. We're going to have enough money so she got to spend all the money trying to take care of me and get down there. God had some people in the sheepfold following him who has your need because the Bible said you give and it comes back to you good measure, you press down, shake them down, run it over me and give it to your good. So if I have the people positioned in the sheepfold, just when I had a need, because I saw all the time, God said, you know what? I'm going to rain on your hearts. <laughs> I ain't going to get more than a $500 this weekend because of my faith in God. People, they're not serious about the call of the ministry on their life. So when things ain't going to really walk, they need the church. Hirelings, members in the congregation, hirelings. They only here temporarily for their own personal satisfaction. When it's not being met, I'm leaving the sheep for because I'm a hireling. He said, when the wolves came against the sheep, what happened? This shepherd abandoned the sheep. You know I'm in Jeremiah and Ezekiel. All the prophets are the same thing about shepherd got put out. Yeah. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 1 and 2 talks about the same thing. Jeremiah chapter 23, 1 and 2 talks about how God positioned people as shepherds over the sheep. He said, but the sheep, the shepherd, some shepherd, that heart is saying it's vision, be a son, don't even take care of the sheep. He said, you feed yourself, you dress yourself, but you let my sheep go astray, so you just let them scatter. But God says, woe to you, shepherds. A stern warning to you, shepherds, who feed yourself, and you cause my sheep to scatter, because he said, the same judgment is going to fall on you because of your disobedience. So God is trying to restore the house. He's trying to restore order. I thank God for the faithful one who been standing in from day one who have not abandoned ship. Which is an indication that something on the inside that like fire burning in their soul that keeps compelling them to come to the house of God. It compels them to keep on seeking God's faith in the house of God. You know why? Because in the house of God, in a corporate setting, there is refuge. When we come together in one accord, the spirit of the living God begins to reign in the house, the blessed by every individual who's connected to the shepherd. If you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. Did you know that? It's a blessing being connected to the prophet. Just because he can't speak, he still speaks with his life. His mouth still sings a praise of God. He still declares the word of God. Even on the prayer line every morning, he still finishes up scripture because his mind is still sharp. You can't run him out of the house of God. If God set him here, God said, I'll be the one that takes I'm bringing the sword. And when I bring the sword, I'm going to begin to divide the wheat and the tares. I'm going to take out the feet and the rubble. I'm going to bring in the sheep who have a love for God who don't mind fellowship. Psalm 23. David says, He leads me besides the common waters. You know why? Because I like it chaotic. Trouble comes in our life. And we gotta learn how to trust in the good shepherd. But he can take me to a place I can just sit down and just rest by the still waters. 
Not only that, when I get thirsty, he said, the water's so calm, I can drink from the fountain. But if the water's are raging and in turmoil, the sheep are fucking just that word. I might fall in that drown. And God said, I'm going to be a good shepherd. I'm going to give you my calming word. They're going to be your satisfaction to meet your need. We can need it. He restores, refreshes, revives my soul. When I get troubled, I get thorns in my life, I get overwhelmed with some of the stuff going on. He said, He restores my soul. Glory to God. But one thing I love about David, he said, The Lord, He will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have some wolves and sheep clothing in Pilgrim Church. And God said, I'm going to prepare a table in the presence of your enemy. And you can just sit down and dine with me. And I will dine with you. God promises you don't need to fight this battle. Because it's not by might and it's not by power. It's only by the Spirit of the living God. God promised that when the thief and the robbers come to steal your benefits, God says he daily loads me with benefits. So when the thief and the robber try to take what God has for me, God said I'll raise a standard against them. I'll stop right in that trap. Matter of fact, I'll call them to run away from you. Say, even when he's still from, say, he's a thief when he's found. He got to restore you seven times. That's what he has stolen. Why? Right? But God is a God of multiplication. God knows I can take a little bit to fish and find loaves and feed 5,000 people and still have 12 bags of fragments left over. God knows what he's doing better than you can figure it out. So many times we try to fight both in the house of God. And God says, sometimes you need to shut up. And sit out and mind your business. Begin to trust in the Lord. Because when you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean up to your own understanding, God promises, I'm going to lead you to pasture green. We go and eat what you need in the pasture. So many times there's a wolf out there waiting to devour you. There is a lion in the field sometimes looking to devour you. Jesus told him, He said, He's like a royal lion seeking whom he may devour. Looking and looking about, looking for someone else who's weak in that pain. Looking for somebody who ain't prayed up, ain't staying in their word. Looking for somebody who ain't seeking the face of God. But God promises that I'll be shield around about you. I will guard and protect you from the enemy coming against you. Because if God be for me, who can be against me?
is in my sheep. When the wrongs and the things came in, right now, that voice. But he said, they know my voice. So when I speak, I mean, the whole team of commercial EF doesn't speak. Everybody listens. I come to tell you when Jehovah God speak, everybody listen, cause it built heaven out through age and eternity. It brought me to check the foundation of the earth, and God will deliver you. You might be here today. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, "For God so loved the world." That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever shall believe in him shall believe, though his boys shall have eternal life. You can have it today. You might be a backslider in today. You may slip in a slide in every direction. With every wind and doctrine, anything came in the direction you went over there, you went over there. God told Jeremiah, prophesied to the backfire, tell them I'm married to them, that I'll restore them from their backfire away. I will deliver them. And I will heal them. He's here today. When it, <clears throat> everyone lift their hands all over the room. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for your glory. You get the glory. You get the honor. You get the satisfaction. When we yield ourselves to you, Lord, I want you today to pick all of our hearts, to take a moment to examine where we are in the sheepfold. Are we committed? Are we stubborn? Are we rebellious? That you, God, would draw us back to the sheepfold in a place where we need to be in your presence, God. Yes, Lord, yes. That you can carry us on your shoulders, God. We find ourselves weakened. Even when we stray away, God, that you bring us back. Because I rod that staff, they comfort us. You anoint our heads with oil. That same anointing, yoke destroy, burden removing, the power of God. Let it flow, God, in every heart right now to set your people free from the inside and the outside that you would get the glory, God. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. And I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your
Father, man of God, spoke to us by the way, Sam. Hallelujah. Let it be a sweet sound in your ear. Eternal God, we come right now, Lord, to take you. Thank you. We thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt through your man and your message, Father. We pray, oh God, that you bless these gifts that have been given. We pray that it be used for the purpose of which you was raised for. Thank you for the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 